I'm going to follow this recipe because I've already heat treated these blades before. So I'm going to treat them as if they were forged blades. These are all 80 CRV2, except this one. This one's 1075. I heat treated all these in my propane forge about, about a year and a half ago. I just never got around to finishing these things. I just, you know, anyway, <clears throat> I figured I'd come back to them. And I've been watching Laren Thomas's videos, and it's like, do knife makers know how to heat treat? Uh, how to heat treat 80 CRV2 and, and all these videos, and it's kind of making me feel insecure now. <laughs> so I busted out these knives. Now that I got an oven, here's 65, and I just went to town, and it dug a pretty good hole. Digs it. it dig a hole right through it. And when I get the 60, it, it doesn't. So the 65 HRC file made a notch in every single knife, which it, it should. It's 65. But what caught my attention is each notch was different. Each knife felt like a different hardness just by a point or two, which led me to um, reheat treat. What do you think, Sally? Going to reheat treat all these? Okay, so the first process is I'm going to normalize them. I'm going to... Full power, and I'm going to take it up to 1600 degrees, and I'm going to hold them there for about 30 minutes. Okay, now that I got the blades normalized, now I'm going to put them back in the oven. I'm going to put it on 1400 degrees, and at 1400 degrees, I'm going to let them soak in there for like 30 minutes. And then I'm just going to shut the oven off and leave them in the oven. Oh! There's like a process of how to like drop the temperature. The, I'm not going to be able to kneel it that way. I don't have that sand to put them in. I'm just going to leave them in the oven. And then I should be ready to start the beginning of the heat treat process. What do you guys think? Huh? What are you thinking? It's been a while since I turned this thing on. <laughs> wow. I got some... Uh... Parks 50, I got Parks AAA, I got canola oil, and according to Laren Thomas, the only one you need is uh, pretty much Parks 50. Um, canola oil sucks, he said, and uh, Parks AAA is just if you can't afford uh, Parks 50. <laughs> so, oh, oh, there. All right, time to let that warm up. <laughs> Burning off all the dust. I'm assuming you can heat treat it again. If I'm wrong, well, I'm a knife maker. I don't know how to heat treat. <laughs> yeah, my dog just took his whole foot and clawed it right across my whole face. Oh, man. Come here, Hank. What are you doing, man? You trying to hurt me? Come on. You gotta be gentle, buddy. You gotta be gentle. Here. Okay, get down. Yeah. See how this goes. Man. I figured I'd talk a little bit. Uh, I'm going to make this uh, Siberian chef knife <laughs> for a buddy. Yeah, right, Hank? Okay. Watch the oil. Uh, as far as temperatures, the oil parks 50. I heard it's cool at room temperature, which is 70 degrees. I'm going to take it up to maybe, you know, just to where it's warm on my finger. It's probably 80, 90 degrees. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But if you have your hands in the same spot on the blade all the time, I notice it'll be thinner where your fingers were. But uh, like on the last video I just made, I ran into uh, a problem where there's like a spot like here or something. It got a burr while I was grinding and the burr rolled over and fell off and I didn't realize it. So when I look at it, it's like, oh, there's a dippy do. Great. So you got to saw it on the stone and get it flat and start all over again and try to avoid that area to get the rest of it thin. It's a pain in the butt. That's where getting them super thin, I still need to work on my grinding skills a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at just leaving them a normal thick edge or, you know, somewhat thin. But as far as, as, far as getting that super thinness, like some of these guys can do, I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I, I'd like to upgrade my grinder to a 2 by 72 you know, and... Uh, one more thing to mention, um, there is a bunch of anti-scale all over these things still. So, I know 80 CRV2 likes to get scale buildup. Um, 
sure the I'm sure I've I've tested 80 CRV2 plenty of times in a propane forge, and I've not had any problems. I'm just and I've ha been happy with the uh, results I've had as far as performance. But I'm just wondering if I'll notice a difference with them being heat treated in the oven. Um, Laren Thomas kind of. It sounds like he frowns upon um, accurate heat treating inside a propane forge. Because furnace heat treating provides much more consistent results, and you can dial in the heat treatment parameters to have optimal performance. I'm an engineer, and I love my furnace and the consistent results it gives me, and I can't imagine heat treating a product I would be selling with a forge heat treatment. But I know people are still going to heat treat with a forge, so you might as well do it with a method that is more likely to work. You know, so I've made enough ADCR V2 blades now to where if there is a difference, a substantial difference, I will notice it. And if I notice it, I'll say it. I don't care. Um, I'm just curious if I notice a difference, though. We'll see. Okay, time is up. Let's do this. Get it in there fast to avoid the perlite. Yeah. The oil is an important part of these high carbon steel knives. Um, you got to make sure you got your oil too. You get a little thermostat like this. We are right around 110 degrees. About 110 degrees. Put a little tie wire on it. Hangs right in the corner. Bam! Not in the way of nothing. Okay, anytime I heat treat one of these big cleavers or something like this, I always worry about it turning into a potato chip. So after I go into the oil, I'm going to take and put it into this clamp here just to try to keep it straight. We have a lot of problems with these types of blades. And ACRV2, it likes to warp. So, here we go. see it? Now you don't. Mm -hmm. Don't get anxious. Let the alarm go off. I know there's only a matter of seconds. Let it go. Let it click. Oh, it just did. All right. We're not in a hurry, man. We're having fun. Come on. No flare-ups, baby. No flare-ups. The 1075. All righty. There she comes. Whoop. In the hole. All right. If you don't have one of these clamps, what are you waiting for? Everything's straight. So less scale. Less warping in the oven. Waiting on my oven to get down to temperature where I can actually temper them. I'm just going to let them rest here in the freezer. Okay, I'm going to do 390 for two hours. Ready. Here we go. I'm going to temper them all in one shot. And I got some pretty interesting results. I'm pretty excited about this, and the reason I'm excited is because it's boring. Uh, real boring results. And why is it boring? Well, each one of these notches that I originally put in here, if you notice, they're all different. Or, the, you know, this one's real deep, this one's not as deep, you know. And I scraped on them about the same force and about the same amount of time. So what it's telling me is, they're, they're all inconsistent coming out of the propane forge. All right, so each one of them had a little bit different hardness. Even if it was only one point or two, they were different. Coming out of the oven, 
Hey, yep, each one of these gouges, everything, it feels the same. So coming out of the furnace, each one of them are probably exactly the same hardness. Each one of them consistent, nice and boring. And that's what you want being a knife maker. You want consistency. I drill my holes the same. I do everything the same. That way you can dial it in. That way you can get better. If it's inconsistent, you can't improve. So um, what I, I heard Laren Thomas say that he wouldn't uh, suggest selling a knife. I think it's okay to sell a knife that is heat treated in a forge. I've done it before. Uh, but what I would do is let the people, let the customer know that you heat treated it in a propane forge. And there's a strong possibility it's not going to have its maximum potential. Does that mean it's going to make a bad knife? Some people are better in forges than others. Uh, but uh, you can still have a good knife. It's not going to have maximum capabilities of the steel. Represent the steel in the proper, the proper way. So, yep. These are probably about 60 HRC, you know, I would say. But, um, hey, thanks for watching. Um, I know this ain't scientific, but I think it's pretty accurate. What it shows is uh, a heat treat oven is consistent. You will get consistent results, and then you can dial it in. In a propane forge, and I consider myself to be pretty good at heat treating in a propane forge. Um it's inconsistent. It's a pretty good uh, results right there. Each one of them had different um, hardness levels. Now they're all about the same, 60, 61, which I'm fine with that. Um, thanks for watching.